Yeah, it finally happened. Southampton lost. We can stop talking about it. Joe, done. Finito, happy? Yes and no. Yes, in the fact that it's finally happened. We finally lost. But no, because I wanted that unbeaten run to go right back to when we were voted <laughs> to the Premier League. But it's just one of those things, isn't it? It's just one of those things. But the sign of a good manager and um, you know ethos and the team is to bounce straight back and Friday night you did exactly that how are you and welcome back to the Southampton View we are going to be talking about um, the uh, the game this weekend and we're also going to be chatting to you about um, Smallbone and Charles and Flynn Downs and a few others so let's get straight into it uh, first of all what happened at uh, Ashton Gate what didn't uh, happen at Ashton Gate I think is the right question I mean we just looked off it from minute one. Like Bristol, they they came out and they they had a clear game game plan and it worked like nobody's business. I've noticed that when we play against teams that like to sit on the low block, we really struggle. Same against Sunderland, they they passed through us and they caught us on the counter. Same at Bristol. Um, sometimes it just doesn't work, and it was just one of those evenings. I mean, we we still bounce back against West Brom, so it is what it is. Yeah, West, I said last week, West Brom do not lose at home. The new owner was there, the the, the, the crowd were up, it was under the lights, it's on TV. And you, yeah, it didn't even just look one-way traffic from generally most of the game. Very impressive performance, I thought. Yeah, it was it was superb. I mean, I was there with um, a couple of mates and it was just, it was just completely different to what I saw a few days beforehand at Bristol. It was, it was attacking, it was fast pace, it was quick and it was urgency and it just it worked and they just couldn't they couldn't deal with the press that we had against them and it it worked all game yeah all right just a few sort of criticisms then so um small bone or, or charles in that midfield um small bone in particular is, is coming in for a little bit of fire from fans saying you know it's too slow in the build-up is quite a neg- more negative player than perhaps you'd like to see there and, and one fan on twitter said i never want to see him in this midfield uh again put put a rebo back there um what's your thoughts on 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 that position and and the job small bone does I mean, the problem with Smallbone is he's he's playing a completely different position to what he was playing at Stoke. He's playing a more advanced role, whereas at Stoke he was kind of sat in as a number six rather than a number eight or ten. So it is a completely new role. However, I do think he is far too slow in possession. I, I noticed it at Bristol City where most of the mistakes were coming from a mixture of Charles and Smallbone. They were just too slow and they just couldn't deal with the press that Bristol had on us in, in that midfield area. I mean, a lot of fans are over-reliant on Flynn Downs and as soon as you take him out of our midfield, it just, it's, it's just, it's just, it just, it might not as well as be there. We might as well have three less players on the pitch because our midfield just gets bypassed when he's not in, when he's not in there. Um, we'll come back to Flynn Downs in a second. I just want to look at the home fixtures then that Southampton have got left, and let's just compare them to the other three, uh, so the other two that are in the mix. Then, um, of course, um, your run in includes, um, as you can see, Preston, Sunderland, Middlesbrough, Coventry, Watford, Stoke. So, in comparison, and on paper, you're looking at it and saying, "Well, Coventry is going to be an awkward one." But by the time you come to play them, potentially most of those teams won't have much to play for. Um, do you think you've got the easier running compared to Ipswich and Leeds? Having looked at those fixtures, yeah, I would I would say that it's the easier of the three run-ins that the teams at the top have got. Mm. Um, but sometimes it's, 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 it's harder to play the, the, the teams at the bottom, isn't it, who are going to be fighting oh, yeah. for their lives. So you know, Ipswich have got you know, Sheffield Wednesday and Huddersfield to come who aren't going to be rolling over, yeah. whereas you might look at Watford and Middlesbrough who could be well out of the race by then and they'll be on the beach. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I just, I worry about the couple of the home games, i.e. Your, my, the Watford, the Middlesbrough and the Sunderland, that really does stick out to me only because we got completely undone against Sunderland away and I just worry that 
if it were to happen at home, then it could get really nasty. But it's just, it's just kind of a wait and see sort of thing, really. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Leeds are now copying you and they're eight, yeah. in, eight and eight. <laughs> and if um, if they beat Leicester on Friday and both you and Ipswich win, um, then suddenly Leicester's position doesn't look all that safe. Do, do you see them at all being dragged into this? Being coming two from four rather than one from three? A hundred percent. Oh yeah, I, I see. I, I I said that the um, Leicester slide would, would come this weekend, and to my to one of my friends, and and it started to happen. So, <laughs> I mean, they're now probably going to go round, going to turn around and win every single other game. But I I think that they are they're definitely catchable. There's I think is nine points that separates Leicester from Leeds in second. So it is it's doable, but. We just need to make sure that us especially are on our game every single week. Yeah. Okay. Um, and finally then, um, at the end of the season, um, if you're only allowed to sign one of these players permanently, which one would you sign? Flynn Downs, Howard Bellis or Ryan Fraser? So difficult because they've all been superb. Um, Howard Bellis. <laughs> I think what he brings to our back line is just something that we've never seen since we had Van Dyke back in 2016, something like that. He just, he's just the most composed player on the ball and he just knows how to pick an absolute worldie of a pass. So, and 20 million for him is an absolute steal in this day and age. Like, absolutely. Peanuts. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, you can see from the, the celebrations, I think, on, on Friday, just how much he loves this club. This is, um, yeah. you know, clearly not like a, a lone player who's just getting for the money. He's actually, you know, lives and breathes Southampton. Um, OK, uh, what are your predictions then for this weekend's game? I'll look quite a difficult team to, to predict against because on their day, they can be superb. However... I do feel like it could be a reverse, a scoreline same to reverse, where it was the two-one. I think it we won't score in the dying embers of the game. I think it will be wrapped up before then. But yeah, I can see it. Hopefully, a two-one to to Southampton. Okay. All right. Well, enjoy the whole game, and we'll catch up with you uh, next week. And it's FA Cup next week, and we'll be doing a preview, hopefully, of Liverpool uh, throughout the week as well. So join us for that. And thank you, Joe. I'm glad you've lost. No problem. You're welcome. <laughs>